The Blender Geometry Node setup that I will show you is intended to make it easier to create hair cards from curves. Hair cards are usually used for optimization purposes in games and real-time rendering. In short, this setup uses a set of curves and deforms the hair cards along those curves. The rotation or tilt of the hair cards will also align to the surface geometry. All right, I want to start off by going through the geometry nodes settings in the uh, hair card from curves. Let's see, so first off, we have the hair curves collection. This represents uh, the collection that has all the curves and hair curves that uh, the system sort of like spawns these hair cards on. So we can see that. Uh, here, hair part joint. So uh, these curves. Then we have the hair card collection, and this is the actual models of the hair cards. So they look like this, uh, but they could basically be tubes or any type of geometry. Then we have the surface collection. This is used for collision. So I have made a decimated version of the head. You can see here. And it also can transfer normals and vertex color from this mesh. Then we have re redistribute curve points. And uh, sometimes you might get issues uh, with weird twists like this. With a head card, we have strange twists and uh, in order to fix that you can redistribute the curve points but uh, in most cases it should just work and not be needed then we have a uh, seed this uh, sort of decides on how the hair curves sorry the hair cards are instanced and then we have the hair card build direction and if we hover over this we can see that zero means x one means Y and two means Z. So in this case, my hair cards are built in the X direction, as we can see here. So this is the X axis, and this is the root, this is the tip. So they're supposed to be built in the positive direction of the axis. Then we have the radius multiplier, and this is sort of making the hairs, hair cards wider. We have the length factor, which can make the hair shorter. Tilt, tilt, uh, tip tilt randomize is um, the setting that randomizes the tip like this. So if you leave it at zero, it should align the hair cards with the underlying surface collection. And I'm just going to leave this at zero for a second so we can see how it works. So this one um, sort of decides if the hair cards should align to the world. So if this is zero, it's set to the world. So all the hair cards will point up in the Z direction. If we do this, it will align the hair cards to the underlying surface geometry. And, and this one can control if the root should be aligned or the tip should be aligned. And then we can offset the tilt, which basically twists the hair cards like this. Then we have root snap distance. And uh, this means, I'm just gonna turn off this for a second. This means that any uh, root of a hair card that is within the proximity of this distance from the surface will be uh, snapped to the surface. So you can see here that it's slightly offsetted. So we just increase that. There we go. And then we have snap if inside. So this means um, that if I have this to zero, we should see that there are some um, hair cards that are poking through on the inside. And if we increase this, uh, it will sort of like 
catch every hair card that are within this distance and snap to the outside and then we can offset that as well uh, we have subdivide by length so this means if this um, property is on and uh, the hair card is longer than 20 centimeters in this case it will be subdivided one time and if it's um, 40 centimeters it will be uh, subdivided two times so I guess I could um, create a hair card and if I make if I turn this on subdivide by length we should get subdivision after a while yeah So there you see, it subdivides one time. Uh, then we have the ability to pick up the normal from the underlying surface and use that in the shading. So if I set that to zero, uh, the hair cards just use their uh, default normal. If I increase it, it will sample the normal from the underlying head. <clears throat> Mask curves is a way of um, sort of like you can paint a weight on the underlying surface. We can actually go into the hair card simple to uh, sort of look at that. So it means here in the settings I have something called mask in the mask curve section so on this sphere there is a weight called mask and that is what's being picked up so if i just um delete this we get more hairs in the back here and if i create a new group that gets hair and then I can paint it away like this. And um, we can also sample the vertex color. You have to check what the name is of the vertex color attributes on the um, surface geometry. So that is it is COL. So you can see if I just delete this it won't pick up the underlying colors. But if I paste it, it's just gonna sample it. <clears throat> then you can choose if you will sample from the roots, which is this point, for instance, or uh, the position. So you can see here the difference. So it's basically just like projected out like that. Okay, um, UV from surface. Sometimes you want to look at the position of the root and just sample the UV from the sphere on the closest surface. And you can use, that could be useful in a game development scenario where you have textures on the sphere and painting like different colors on the hair. And in order to do that, you need to have a special UV on the surface uh, sphere that you name. In this case, I've named it UV transfer. And we can actually just look and see how uh, the result looks. So if I go to um, UV editor, for instance, this is the default UV. And here we can see we have the UV transfer. Um, so all of these are really small but here you can see so <clears throat> this uh hair card has this uv point which corresponds to this position on the sphere uh the next thing is something called the uh, parting line so i'm just gonna remove this so we can see so this is just a curve 
that I have um, created. And this could be really useful to sort of like snap these uh, hair cards or the roots to this parting line because it's sometimes hard to precisely uh, position the hairs at that uh, parting line position. So you just sample the name of the parting line and then every root that is within this distance will be snapped to that parting line. Uh, another thing that can be tricky sometimes is if you have very flat hair, um, you usually want some type of a uh, little curve, sort of, or a bump or something coming out. So this means that you can increase this distance it even more maybe yeah so this is basically what it does it just bumps it up slightly from the uh, based on the distance from the uh, parting line and this is the distance from the parting line and this is how much it should lift along the normal all right here's an overview of the file uh, the file consists of different uh, scenes over here, but I've set them up, up in different workspaces, so it's easy to switch between them. So here's uh, information about the file, readable. We have the geometry node set up here, which can be a bit complicated and, and long to get a grasp of, uh, so no need for that really. Uh, here set up for grooming a character, already done. Then a simple uh, hair card setup just to sort of like uh, make it easier to understand how this thing is set up. And then finally a um, setup where you can render out textures for hair cards using an orthographic camera uh, with shaders and compositing setup. All right, we are going to uh, recreate this uh, simple hair setup. So I'm just going to create a UV sphere like this, make it a bit small, move it over here. Just going to apply the transforms, move this into some uh, test collection. Good enough. Now I want to add hair to this. So I'm going to create curve and then empty hair and with as you can see that uh, this collection was active when I created the curve, so the curves end up there. So I'm just going to uh, move that to this collection instead. And then I will press tab and go into sculpt mode. And I will make sure I have this thing activated, setting the density. Just going to add some, oh, that's really long length. Let's see, 10 centimeters? Yeah, maybe like that. A couple of hairs. Something like this. Pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to create a um, collection and I'll create a, just a plane. I'm calling, it, calling this hair card outputs. That. I'm going to create a geometry node modifier. Press new. Oh, sorry. Uh, hair card. There we go. This is the one. So as you can see, there's no geometry now because we need to input some stuff here. So hair curves collection, <clears throat> that should be the collection containing only the hair curves. Let's see, maybe it works just selecting the tests. One hair card collection should be these guys. So it's hair card source 
just copy that, paste, yeah, surface collection <clears throat> should actually also be pests because the surface is in there. Now I would like to paint some vertex color here so that we can pick up. Do a bit of painting. So here I'm just like, just press tab and enter uh, vertex paint. Change some colors. And then here, so color from surface. I have to figure out what the name of the color is. I'll just call this COL. <clears throat> Copy that. Insert it here, color from surface. And it picks up the color. We can actually copy the material here. Just control L, link materials. So we can sort of like see the underlying surface a bit better. And the cool thing now is if we just groom, the uh, hair curves will align to the underlying surface. We can also try to paint some weights. Paint the way a bit up there. We have to figure out what name that. I'll call it uh, mask, and I'll paste in mask. Great. So now we can see that where it's a weight of zero, there will be no hair curves. And uh, yeah, that's. Pretty much it. Uh, go back to the settings of the um, hair card from Curves Geometry Nodes um, setup. That is earlier in this video to uh, get information about all the settings. All right, now I will explain how the character setup is made. So we're going to start off with the hair curves. So let's see here. Just going to close these. So hair curves. So here's a couple of collections. We have hair parts for grooming. That is the back groom and the front groom. Just going to show this real quick. So how it works is that I have divided this up so that since um, <laughs> the hairs area sort of like overlap here. I just wanted to have two different hair curve systems so that's it, it is easier for me to groom this without it uh, affecting different parts too much. And then these are joined. If I go to hair part joined, just isolate selection here, you can see that this is using a geometry node and I'm looking at a hair collection, uh, hair parts for grooming. So it's uh, this one with the front and back. And basically what I'm doing is instancing more hair curves based on those uh, two hair grooms. So if I increase the density, that will increase my hair card density as well. I can set it to zero, increase it like this. That's pretty nice. I can also offset it along the normal, like that. And I also have these very specific um, curves as well. And that can be very useful because when you are adding curves, you can press Control L and just see if I can show this a bit easier. So if I go into edit mode, I can press Control T and twist the hair card like this. That is really great for just like adding final touches. After that, the joined hair um, curves are fed into this geometry which uh, we can find here. So this, these are basically the um, thick 
hair cards, which uh, covers a lot of the underlying surface. And we also have some sparse hair, which is a bit thinner. And this thinner hair is using the curves that are here. And if we investigate this, we can see that the sparse curves are also using these two objects, but it's also offset a bit along the normal. And this is sort of like to replicate um, these kind of flyaway hairs. So you have some, it's going like that. Then we have the, uh, yeah, the hair cards. So the thick hair cards are using these three because those have the most thick texture. And we can find them here in the hair card thick. And then there's actually just one sparse hair card. Uh, you could add as many as you want, of course. Furthermore, there is a... Um, we can see that there's a simple head surface as well. And uh, this is, um, I mean, it has some polygons that are not needed. So in order for the groom to be as uh, responsive as possible, I have uh, created just a simple version of that head. So where we can like test collisions and um, sample normals and whatnot. And uh, since everything of this is uh, set up now, it's very easy to just go in here, select a brush, and you can groom this. So this is really cool that you can groom it this way. And you can add any type of uh, deformer on the hair curves being used as well. That will transfer over to the um, hair cards. One thing worth mentioning is that the uh, underlying mesh underneath the hair cards looks like this. So this is basically a hair cap, which we can see here. And it has, uh, you know, transparency and a texture. And this is nice to use because you both do get a lot of coverage uh, so that your character doesn't look bald. And you can also get more fine tune like transition towards this uh, middle hairline as well, or the parting line. Now we will take a look at the hair card texture creation scene. We, in the 3D viewport, we have some hair that are grown on these um, planes. And if I want one, uh, one strand to appear more dense, I can just scale it like that, and it will appear a lot more dense from the camera. If I want, I can um, add additional hair deformers here. You can go to um, check the hair essentials. So we have the hair curves noise that I can add. I can increase distance, change the shape. You have to be a bit careful so it doesn't end up outside of the UV. Then uh, there's a texture on these hair curves and that texture will um, render out some passes as a UV output. So we have noise, ambient occlusion, random intercept, etc. This is all taken care of in the composter later on. So the rendered signal comes out like that. And uh, it goes through here, does some uh, fancy stuff. And then it's written out to separate files over here. And it's basically a subfolder to the place that, uh, where you save the Blender file. You can have a quick look at some of the textures. Here we have a normal alpha random for hair specular value and this is the intercept which shows a darker co darker color at the root and a brighter color at the top let's say that you have made a new change to the 
hair uh, cards here in the hair card texture creation, like so. You need to render this out with Control F12, and then just wait a bit. Yeah, so now it's rendered. So if you go to the shading, you can see that the textures are still the old versions. And in order for uh, them all to reload, I have added a script that launches when you open the file. It adds this button called Reload Textures, which will reload all the textures in the entire scene. And if that doesn't happen, you might need to change your settings here to um, auto-run Python scripts. So let's press this button and the texture is updated. And we can see that here as well.